All right, today's daily rehab workout is strengthening for the hip and the knee, especially for runners. Now, runners need decent quad strength and most of all, decent glute med strength. And it's the sort of thing we see in the clinic as weak glute meds causing knee issues and hip issues with runners. So that's the stuff we're gonna focus on today. Again, you can do a lot of exercises, but I'm just gonna give you three that are really essential that you get right especially if you're a runner. Now the first one is our old favorite, the step down. Now the step down is to get single leg knee and hip loading control and getting it better and getting it stronger. Now what I suggest you start off with is using a box. Now if you're at home you could just use a step or you could use a few bricks and a piece of wood. Just something that you're elevated off the floor. So when you're doing a step down, which is that, okay, which is a reverse step up, okay, or going into a reverse lunge if you like. If you're elevated, it'll give the sense that you're stepping down. If you're simply just on the floor, you're not stepping down, okay? So you're not gonna actually drop the hips down into a squat pattern, which is what I want to happen. So if you're elevated, that's gonna happen more. It's just gonna make your technique way better. So if you're doing a single leg step down, You've got to look perhaps in the mirror in front of you. If you've got a mirror, fantastic. If you haven't, you maybe use some doors that have got glass in them so you can see your reflection. I want you to look, if I show you this way, I want you to look at the hip line, okay? So the glute med part is trying to keep your hips level. So when you're running, if this is weak, it's gonna drop there, which is gonna cave your knee in and cause problems up in the hip. So this muscle here needs to keep your hips level. So to try and, you know, make this exercise work for you. You just need to focus on can you keep your hips level when you squat on one leg? Because most people who have trouble with this can't. They'll squat and they'll drop. Okay, so you've got to try and practice. Can I keep my hips level here? So the front two bony parts, or if you've got a t-shirt line, you can have a look at that t-shirt line and keep that level as you squat back and down. Okay, so I'm bending my knee, I'm letting it go forward as long as it's not pain. I'm trying to keep my knee in line, which we'll talk about in a minute, but the biggest thing you've got to focus on, especially if you're a runner, is the hip control. So focus on your hips, because that's gonna directly translate down to being able to control your knee. Don't just worry about your knee rolling in and out. Worry about the hips, because that's gonna help take care of the knee. So that's the control work there, keeping that level as you squat down into that step down position. Now my back foot again is not weight bearing. My back foot is tapping. It's merely a thing to tap and then come back. My front foot is the loaded one. All right, so when you're on here, if you're doing this correctly, when you load on the front foot, then you're gonna feel that scream in your hip. Okay, so you don't need massive load con loaded down movement. You just need to take that slowly. So you see I'm still weight bearing on that leg. I haven't put weight through my back leg yet down the tap, then come back up. See if you can stay there with your foot up, all right? And then go through your second repetition. So the whole time, again, I keep talking about it, but that hip control is crucial. So if you find your hips dropping at a certain point, you're only allowed to work in the range that you can keep level. There's no point creating and repeating a bad movement pattern. So if you get to the point where you're here and you get a bit lower and then you drop, that's as far as you're allowed to go. Don't go further thinking you're gonna get stronger because you're just creating a bad movement pattern for the hip. So once you get stronger, you'll find, as you repeat it, you'll get lower and lower and lower, all right? Now the step down, if you're really good at that, the way to quickly advance that is use some load. Use a power band. Now this is where you will need some equipment, but hey, bands are pretty easy to come by. With the band, what I tend to do is I do the step down with that on the front leg and on the shoulder, okay? So it's in that position. So there's my weighted load, rather than worrying about dumbbells. If you've got dumbbells at home or kettlebells, use those, that's fine. This is a nice, easy way to do it. So when you step down, there's that load downwards on the knee, which gives it a bit of compression load, a bit of more strengthening. But remember, as you get lower and more vulnerable, 
and you think you're gonna you know, lose your control, the band actually gets lighter. So it's a good entry point. If you're gonna start adding load on, start with the band first, then work on weights after so that doesn't have that gradual change in load as you go lower and up and down, all right? So that's how you quickly advance that. Second exercise, is your one leg ball squat, but at home, most people don't have Swiss balls, so let's do it against the wall. So I'll show you here. When you're doing, oh, listen, a one leg ball squat is like this, but I'm gonna modify it for you guys to do it at home. Plus, you can also do it where you're out running, so you don't have to do it at home. So this is what we're gonna try and do, right, with a ball squat, but you're gonna try and do it without the ball. So all I suggest you do is have it so you're closer to the wall, and so instead of pushing your knee into the ball, you push it into the wall. Now preferably, again, if you can have a mirror or a you know, glass door in front of you so you can see what's happening, then you're gonna control this a little bit better. So this one now, as you can see, I'm locked in here. I've taken away my balance issue. So you think of like the step down is more the balance for your hip and your knee. This is more the strength lateral for my hip. Okay, so when I go through here, I'm gonna go through a squat in that position, all right, and the bias is a little bit more hip than it is knee. So it's more like hybrid between almost like a deadlift position than a squat position. We still call it a squat, because you're still bending your knee forward. And as you get better, you can really let that knee go forward. And this allows you, because my balance is out of the equation, I'm just focusing on my raw lateral strength of my hip here, I can focus on what my knee's doing, okay? So I can have a look at my knee, make sure it's in line with the middle of my foot, so my middle of my kneecap was sitting over the middle of my foot, not over the big toe. If it's over the big toe, it's rolling in, all right? So that point there, I can really focus on that. Make sure you bend both knees, keep those knees level, all right? And bend at your hips. The crucial thing is, sit back, shoulders forward, bend your knee. All right, in that position. The harder I push through that wall, if I push harder, the harder I have to work here. Again, lateral strength is the key for runners because that lateral strength here controls the lateral movement of my knee. So same with the step down. With that movement, you're thinking as a runner, you don't want your knee caving in, all right? So remember, VMO doesn't control what this does. That's all about hip, all right? So doing those two exercises are the crucial ones for your hip as a runner. Now, some runners also get a bit of ITB and anterior knee pain because they don't have very good quads. So, if you're one of those people, add in a knee extension, or a total knee extension. You might have to go to a thicker band. You can always start with this, but you might have to go thicker. That's where you need it around a pole. And again, you can advance this one up as well. So that will go, and if you've seen total knee extension stuff before, always go above the knee joint, okay, not below, above knee joint, where the quad is makes more sense. So that front leg has to be full weight bearing. So think of that front leg as a weight bearing one, and the back leg is doing not much, all right? So when I go from this point here, I'm gonna just straighten my knee, but put weight down through the heel, right? So when you straighten it, don't push your body back, okay? Just keep your body weight centered over your foot, plant over foot as though you're running, okay, in that position there, as though you're sort of going through that running phase, and then just straighten that knee underneath it, turns your quad on, okay? So it's gonna give you a bit more of a pump activation work through the quads, which helps the kneecap so when you're landing on running, you've got a bit of better control there. So this is a really nice one for people getting a bit of patellofemoral pain there that's related to quads more than hip. But remember, when you're doing this, what are you doing? Hip extension. So you're also working the hip as well at the same time. Now, quick little thing to advance that. If you're going good with that, that's fine. If you can do the step down, that's fine. If you can do the step down with the load, that's fine. Add on the two together. So you're doing a step down with your total knee extension. Okay, so from here, this is the movement. So you're gonna go from there, bend and straighten, all right? So down, tap the floor and straighten. So with that sort of thing, you've got the combination, but only do that once you've got those first sort of two done on the hip and the knee extension, or total knee extension on the band, then be my guest and try and combine the two. 
Now, remember, there's heaps of exercises for runners, but I would recommend, if you're new to this sort of stuff, start with that, nail those ones, and then progress on to some harder stuff. I hope that helps.